Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our video series today on 2022's external exams in Queensland, Australia. We are looking at paper two, question six, a sequences question, and this is a complex, unfamiliar question. And personally, I think it's the hardest question on the overall paper. It requires some of your knowledge from year 11 to be reutilized, which is, a, and also probably some of the junior knowledge as well of algebra and linear equations. So let's get right into it. The first three lines in a pattern have the equations given. Um, so here are these equations, line one, line two, and line three. Their slopes form the terms of one sequence. Their y-intercepts form the terms of another sequence. And each sequence is either arithmetic or geometric. Wow, there's a lot to unpack here. We've got three linear equations and we have to take the slopes from each of those to make one sequence, the y-intercepts from each of those to make a second sequence. So firstly, we've got to determine then the coordinates of the point where line five in the pattern intercepts line one. Okay, it's like, wow, what even happened to line four? Okay, let's get there. Okay, so sequence one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gradients or the slopes from each of those. So remember y equals mx plus c. The coefficient of x in each of these is our gradient or our slope. So we're gonna take negative 0.8, positive 0.4, and negative 0.2 from our next line, and we're gonna make our first sequence out of those three points. Okay, now we know from looking at this, it goes negative, then positive, then negative again. And because the sign keeps changing directions, we know it can't be an arithmetic sequence, it's got to be a geometric sequence. Okay, so now what we're going to do is use our formula for a geometric sequence and work out that common ratio between those. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So our common ratio will be term 2 divided by term 1 will be equal to term um, 3 divided by term 2 and so on. So that helps us then to work out what that common ratio is. And if those two numbers end up being the same, then we know it's definitely a geometric sequence, which we suspected that it was. If you weren't sure, you'd probably just have to try it with the arithmetic sequence formula and then the geometric sequence formula to work it out. So if we substitute that information in there now, I've got 0.4 divided by negative 0.8 then I've got equal to negative 0.2 divided by 0.4. That's going to give me a common ratio of negative 0.5 or negative a half. So I've now found um, my common ratio for my first sequence. Okay, now I need to work out what term one is and then I'm going to come up with something for this. So I've got term one from that sequence is negative 0.8. And if I put that into the geometric sequence, this basic form, I'm going to end up with this little formula here, negative 0.8 times minus 0.5 to the power of n minus 1. We're going to need that later on. Working out that that was a geometric sequence, coming up with the variables of the common ratio and term 1 for that would have given us our first mark. Okay, so now that I've worked out this formula, I can actually substitute this part for the line 5 to work out the gradient of that fifth line. So if I substitute in um, the fifth term, n equals 5, I'm going to work out that that is negative 0.05. So I've got my gradient for my fifth line because I know that the gradients are made up of this part of the formula. Okay, so that's my next mark. Okay, so let's work out sequence 2. Sequence 2 is made up of the y-intercepts. So I've got this one here, this one here, and this one here, they are the parts of my next sequence. We can see that they're growing, uh, but it could also be a geometric sequence as well. It doesn't say that one will be geometric and the other will be arithmetic. It says they're going to be one or the other. So let's start with an arithmetic sequence. We're going to test this one. Um, so we're going to substitute that into the formula. We know that they're going to be growing by a common difference. So the common difference will be the second term take away the first term, the third term take away the second term. Um, so if I work that out, um, and I do that, I'm going to work out the common difference is 1.5. And because it's the same amount for both, then I know it's definitely an arithmetic sequence. So now I can use that information. I've got the common difference. I know the first term is 1.2. I could put that into my arithmetic sequence formula. Now I could also substitute in n equals 5 because it's the fifth one in the sequence. Um, that's my next mark there too, by the way. 
Now I can work out the intercept for this line. It's going to be 7.2. So now I've got a gradient, I've got an intercept, I can work out the equation for line five. And that working out that part there, that intercept was also my next mark. There's a lot of marks in this question. Okay, so I've got the gradient, negative 0 0.05, the intercept 7.2 let's put that into y equals mx plus c and we get y equals negative 0.05x plus 7.2 i've now got an equation for line five now what i'm going to do is i have to work out the coordinates of the point where this line intersects line one now you could work this out graphically but they didn't give you graph paper which implies that you need to work it out algebraically that means solving simultaneous equations and this is where a lot of students um, I don't know if a lot of students made a lot of progress on this question if your algebra skills aren't very good you probably would have gone no way and just moved on here but a lot of students wouldn't know about intersecting lines that there's only two methods you can use graphical and algebraic if you're not given the graph paper you're expected to show solving simultaneous equations so what I'm going to do is I'm going to name each of these equations let's take a bit of space here to get that done so I know y is equal to a combination of two numbers to add added together and y is also a combination of two other numbers. If you think about this in terms of real numbers in real life, I could say that the number 7 is made up of 5 plus 2 and it's also made up of 3 plus 4. So different numbers can combine together to come to the same answer and that's why this one here um, and this one here will be equal to one another because they're just different combinations added together. They're both y. So I can actually substitute equation 5 into equation 1 and set them equal to one another because y is equal to y. And so if y is equal to y, then whatever y is adding up to will also equal whatever y is adding up to in a different equation. So now let's solve these simultaneously. This is complex because you've got negatives and um, decimals that would be very confusing for some people. So what I'm going to do here is collect like terms. Now the way for me to do this is I've got a negative 0.8 over on this side, um, which is actually a smaller number than 0.05x. I always take say the smallest one of your terms that has a letter in it to the other one that's bigger. Now this might not look bigger to you, but if you were to put them on the number line, this is a lot more negative than this number here, which makes it a smaller number, even though it doesn't look like it. So we're going to actually add 0.8x to both sides. What that will give us is 0.75x on this side. Now we're dealing with positive numbers. Whew. Okay, we've got equals plus 7.2 equals 1.2. Now we want to get x all by itself. To do that, I have to subtract 7.2 from both sides. And what I'm going to get get again is 0.75x equals negative 6. Now at the moment 0.75 is multiplied by x. I need to undo the multiplication by doing an inverse operation which means the opposite of multiply. I'm going to divide both sides by 0.75. I'm going to end up with x is equal to negative 8. You'd need to use a calculator for that one. Now I'm only halfway there. I've found the x coordinate. I need to find the y coordinate, which means I need to substitute this x value into one of these equations. Doesn't really matter which one. And I'm going to work out what y's value is. So I've got a mark there for substituting into equation five is my instructions. So finding x was a mark. Now I've put in here some communication. I'm going to substitute that into this equation. Why did I choose that equation? I just felt like it doesn't really matter. You could have chosen either. So I'm going to have negative 0.05 multiplied. Now notice that that is not the same symbol as that one there. That's a times now. It's not an x. We've substituted negative 8 where the x was. And when I work that out, I'm going to get a y value of 7.6. Now remember, these are coordinates of a point where they intersect. So I need to put it in coordinate form. I've got a mark there for finding my y value. And I need to state my coordinates as negative 8, 0.8 and I got my final seventh mark for showing those logical organization communication of my key steps. So that's little things like um, labeling the equations, telling them what you're doing now, you're substituting, substituting, writing your coordinates at the end as proper coordinates and having that clear flow. Now I don't know many people who would have got as far as this in the question, it was probably, like I said, the hardest question on the paper. Well done to you if you were able to work this one out. It is quite complex and very unfamiliar. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. 
if you did here are some ways you can engage further with us on the channel why not tell us in the comments you could follow us on facebook and instagram or even like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is available if you've got any questions at all or you want a little bit of information about how i got to some of those places how did i know what i was doing or you just want to tell me what a revolting question you thought that was um, it was very challenging why not email me at mcclutchymaz at yahoo.com and whoever wrote that question hats goes off to you you're a genius that question was tough okay well, thank you so much for watching today i'm natalie mcclutchy have a wonderful day